What's going on, guys? Uh, I know I may be a little bit late to this with the whole predicting the champions by the end of the year because, you know, three pay-per-views, the champions have already switched up in two of them. Um, I I'll just be going through my list and seeing who I think is going to be champion by the end of the year and just giving my thoughts and predictions and, you know, just all that, all that fun stuff. First off, with the flyweights, uh, I think Manel Cape can become the champion by the end of the year. I really think I he can because I know um people see the weight miss and they think ah they're not gonna push this guy and they're not gonna give him a title fight after his next fight. I think the USC looks at Manel Cape and sees someone like Brandon Moreno. I mean, w when you're five foot five and you're standing up to six foot four Adesanya and you're telling him to shut the fuck up and sit down in the middle of a press conference, it, it pushes. The UFC would want to push you because you have star power. You can talk shit, and he has a fun style. But from, in terms of how I think the fight would go, I think he would probably beat Nikolai. I think he would knock him out. And then I also think he would, uh, I think he would beat, I think he could beat Pantelha because, you know, Manel Cape, he, yeah, he's short, but he's like the same height as Pantelha, and, and he's, you know, a big, strong, physical flyweight. I honestly think he might be a little bit bigger than Pantoja. But, I mean, I, I don't know that for sure. But what I do know is he does have much better striking than Pantoja. Um, and he's improved a lot. In his first fight with Pantoja, he, his big struggle was not being able to output enough and do enough to win the fight. He just kind of, like, tried to cruise. And that kind of that cost him. But I think now he, he's, he has good output now. Uh, he has a pretty decent defensive grappling. Uh, I mean, in the Felipe Dos Santos fight, he didn't get taken down once, but the one, the first takedown, he kind of grabbed the cage for it, so we don't know. But uh, I think he's got great footwork, much better than Pantoja's. I think he can work Pantoja from the outside for a bit, and then what? And he can explode in, piece him up with like a five punch combination, and then back out. He's really fast hands, power. And I think if he can beat Nikolau, then he should be the next guy in line. Or he gets a number one contender fight, and he's either fighting Moreno or Roy Val after Nikolau. And then he's guaranteed a title shot after that. But I think if he if he beats Nikolau, he should probably get a title shot, you know, just to have someone fun in there. Because I know he would be a rematch, but he's such a fun fighter. And he's someone that, like, draws attention to the fight. He'll, he'll, he'll make the fight. So, I I think he would become champion by the end of the year. I think he could beat a guy like Ursig, and I think he, would, he could beat a guy like Pantoja. But then again, both would be pretty tough for him to beat. I think if he could beat both, whatever. He's the GOAT. Not really, but you know you know what I'm saying. Uh, Bantamweight, I think Sean O'Malley's going to say the champion. Um... If you asked me before he fought Cheeto, who would be the champion by the end of the year? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm saying with 100% certainty, Marab is ragdolling him. And because and O'Malley has no cardio and he's too explosive. And his explosiveness is going to be his downfall. Um, That changed. The guy has some crazy, he can put, do crazy output across five rounds. Apparently he... He, I think he hurt his foot and his hand. Maybe. He had, like, ice on it, so I don't know. But, I mean, he showed devastating power. He was the first person to give Cheeto, like, a bruise and a cut. Like, unironically, he was the first person to cut and bruise Cheeto. That's, that's no tall order. Or, that's no easy task. I think he has the heaviest hands in the division by far, and maybe the fastest hands. He probably has the cleanest striking and the most diverse. And a guy like Marab, who's been rocked by guys like Marlon Marais and Henry Cejudo, who you know might try to like rush in, I think O'Malley would would rock him. And I think with his length and his range and his power, he'd be able to you know pick another good shot that would put Marab down for good. So. You know, Marab versus O'Malley, book it. I think Oma I think both have a good shot at winning, but I I I'd lean towards O'Malley at this point in time, honestly. Featherweight, 
I think it's Elias Aporia. Now I'm praying for my boy Max Holloway. The blessed expressed. All right, best box in the UFC. I pray that he bring him the heat. But Ilya Taporia just knocked out the featherweight goat. I mean, the guy has great head movement. He has crazy good combinations. 90% of his striking is, is just his boxing. But I think it's the fact that he, it, he has good grappling too. That he can make it work. Because he always has that threat. And he has a great submission game. He just has a well-rounded skill set. I mean, the other 10% is just leg kicks. He hasn't thrown a single body kick or head kick, I think, in his entire career. I know he hasn't thrown one in the UFC. He has... Cr Not only is his hand speed really good, his power is unbelievable. And his ability to time and find the counter, I mean... The fact that he was able to time Volkanovski's jab and get like an eight punch combination, eventually knocking him out on like the fifth punch. He's crazy. He's got. And usually when you see a guy like this who has, you know, that heat and that who has a major heat in his hands and like one punch KO ability, they usually, you know, they they kind of gas out earlier. But Ilya just doesn't seem to have that problem. He can go five rounds. He did it against Emmett, put a pace on him, pressured him. Beat his shit in. I think he could probably viciously KO everyone in division besides Holloway. I think Holloway is the only guy he would have to take to a decision to beat. I think Holloway would be able to take and eat some of the shots. Because, you know, it's... Like, yeah, he got rocked by... Holloway got rocked by Fourier, but... Then again... That was short notice, a weight class up against a huge Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier is big for lightweight. And Max Holloway was, is kind of like, he's not a huge, feather, he's a big, he's, you know, he's a larger featherweight, but he's not huge, he's not massive. And he had to fight a weight class up on six weeks notice against Dustin Poirier. And he looked f like flat, almost a little bit fat in that fight. So I think, I don't think Ilya would be able to rock or put out a guy like Holloway. But who knows, dude? I don't, his power is like scary. His power is definitely scary. So I think he'll definitely stay champion until the end of the year. Lightweight, my, Kle my king, my glorious king. Look at the jawline. I could cut a glass. I have my glorious king, my I can't speak. My glorious king, Charles Oliveira. He's going to get it done. All right. I'm a Charles Glazer. I'll admit it. I have him on my fucking phone case. All right. I'm a, I'm a dick writer. I'll say it right now. And I know Islam is great. But I just feel like he can pull it off. I think Charles Oliveira has the better hands. Oh, I think he... No, not the better. <laughs> we, Islam proved that, you know, his hands were just a little bit better. I think Charles has the heavier hands. I definitely think he has the heavier hands. Volk was able to rock and drop Islam at times. I think Charles Oliveira, he, I think he hits a lot harder than Volk. I mean, the fighters he's talked to, he, I don't think Volk would ever get close to dropping a guy like Gaethje. And Charles Oliveira dropped Gaethje bad. But I think Islam definitely is a better overall striker. But Charles is no slouch. And I think if Charles... And honestly, I think Charles was improved. I think he's tried to improve and stop... And I think he's tried to like stop relying on just, oh, if I get chinned, then uh, I can just fall on my back because nobody wants to go to the ground with me. And I think if Charles can find that one shot, I think he can drop Islam and I think he can you think he could be able to put him away uh you know I'm delusional and I'm coping my ass off let me dream let me love my baby boy let me love my glorious king Charles Oliveira my sunshine my happiness welterweight
People might think I'm genuinely coping with this. I think this is less of a cope than Oliveira. I think he could become champion, but I'm starting... I'm starting to doubt this year. I think it really depends on how fast his arm recovers and if he has a Dan Hooker-type like moment where, you know, he, he gets a fight scheduled after breaking his arm and then, you know, he fucking... Uh, he, he, you know, he gets a fight scheduled after breaking his arm, but then he has to... Then he breaks it again in camp, and then he has to pull out, and he has to wait, like, another, like, six months. Then, probably not. Like, it's the same thing. I was going to say... I was genuinely going to say Peter Jan for bantamweight, but I think, you know, he, like, destroyed his knee and got his balls destroyed. So, I don't think he's going to be back for a while. But... You know, he has heavy hands and good combinations. He got great, he got good scrambles. He can survive on the ground. Uh, Leon's a bit shinny. He's a bit shinny. He got he got really wobbled by uh, what's his name, Nate Diaz. And I think I, I think Jack Della Madalena hits harder than Nate Diaz. And the thing is, Jack Della Madalena is a pocket fighter. He's going to be throwing hooks and uppercuts. I think early on in that fight against Leon, because here's the thing, Jack Della Madalena, he's not going to be doing what someone like Colby did, where he's going to be standing in front of him and he's going to be on the back foot. I think JDM's going to be on the front foot. He's probably going to get his leg chewed up. But Leon, go, the pace he puts is only as fast or as high as his opponents. He only ever outdoes his opponents. He will only ever output more than who he's fighting. He'll never put on some crazy output all the time. He only ever tries to output a little bit more than his opponent. And and I just think that I just think that he'll be able to he'll struggle early on probably, but I definitely think later on in the rounds he's going to be able to find Leon's chin after he maybe wears him down a bit. I mean, he has ripping body shots, but I just think that, you know, Leon's a bit, ch- he, he can be a bit chinny. I mean, he does cut a lot of weight. He is a big welterweight. So I think Jack Della Madeline, he's probably going to get his leg chewed up and probably drop maybe the first, probably maybe like get, like lose the first two or three rounds. And if he loses the first three, He's definitely got to make up. He's definitely got to play a catch up. But we've seen it happen before. Brandon Roy Val did it against Brandon Moreno. I don't care what you say. He won that fight. But yeah. Uh, I also think he beat Shavka, but people are going to call me a dumb and a casual. So I, we'll just have to wait and see on that. He'll probably have to fight Shavka first. But I think he can beat Shavka. I don't think that's. Some crazy thing that's out of the ordinary to say. I think every fighter is beatable. I think it's just a matter of when will they be beat. So yeah, I think Jack Del Madalena would become could become the welterweight champion by the end of the year. But that broken arm doesn't make me feel good about it anymore. Uh, bit of weight. I think Anthony Hernandez could do it. But I think it's I think it's under a really like strict set of circumstances. I think he can become champion. I think he wins maybe his next. I think he would win his next. I think he's gonna win his next two fights, and then I think he could. I think he could outpace a guy like Drikas. I think Anthony Hernandez can literally outpace anybody in the UFC. I think the only guy in the in that division he couldn't outpace is maybe someone like Whitaker or like. Maybe maybe like a maybe like Strickland because all they. Strickland, all he does is spar. All he does is fight, like every fucking day for like twenty rounds a day. I don't think he's ever. I don't think Strickland would ever get tired in a fight with Anthony Hernandez. But I definitely think Anthony Hernandez can outpace everybody. I mean, he walked down Roman Kapalov. He ate some mean shots off Kapalov, but he landed some mean shots of his own. Uh, I think since Vittori pulled out, Hernandez versus Vittori would be a bomb ass matchup depending on the winner of Curtis versus Allen too I mean he has the best cardio in middleweight by far and it's not even a competition 
He subbed Rodolfo Vieira, a jiu-jitsu world champion, referred to as the Black Belt Hunter. I didn't mention this here. He's He has a win over Brendan Allen. So I think if Chris Curtis beats Brendan Allen, then you do... Fuck it, dude. Marvin Vittori wants to fight. Anthony Hernandez, he's a cool guy. A uh, dope as fuck guy. He has a he has the Marab like pace, but he has the finishing threat. He has the threat to finish you. He subbed Co- Roman Kopalov. He subbed Rodolfo Vieira. Subbed someone else. I forget who. I forgot who. Um, but yeah, I think if he can get the fight with Vittori, by the grace of God, I don't think he will. Then maybe he could get a short nose title shot, or he fights maybe one more time. Four times in a year. Who knows? I've seen it. Be, I've seen it happen before. Fighters fight four times in a year, and then they get their title shot. I heard like a beep in my ear. That was fucking weird. Ugh. But yeah, that's. I definitely think he could pull it off. Light heavyweight. I know I'm a Charles Glazer. I'm a little bit of an Alex Glazer, but like, I, I genuinely think he could. I I think he I think he can beat I think he beats Jamal Hill because you know. I, Hill leaves himself open to get hit by big shots. Santos and Teixeira have hit him with huge shots. I will say Hill has a granite chin. He has an unnaturally good chin. And I think Hill's Hill's uh, willingness to say, I'm going to stand with this guy and I'm going to knock him out. I think that's going to give Alex the comp, kind of like the, okay, I'll... I'm going to take a little bit of a back foot this time, chop up the lead leg, you know, and then whenever he, I find an opening, I throw the left hook and I put him out. And I also think he could be Uncle Live because Uncle Live did say he also wanted to like try and go blow for blow with Pereira. He was saying he wanted to strike with him. And I think that confidence could be his downfall too. I don't, I haven't watched back a lot of Uncle Live's fights, but from what I've seen in his recent fights, I haven't really seen him get wobbled or hurt, so I I don't know how good his chin is. Hill has a really good chin, I'll say that. So, but I don't think he'll be able to turn around quick enough for three hundred one to get three fights in a year. Uh, he probably fights if if he beats Hill, which I think he does. He he probably is going to take enough. I I'd imagine Hill would touch him up a bit. To put him on the sidelines for a bit, I'd imagine he, you know, Hill would maybe cause a cut or like a black eye, just enough to like Pereira couldn't turn around in a month time, and then I think after that, you know, you do you do Uncle Live versus Pereira in November. Fuck it, another another November pay per view. He headlines MSG again, four times he headlines MSG. Let him do it, bro. Let him do it. But that is my pick, and I think you guys might know my heavyweight pick. It's my boy Tom Aspinall. I think he could beat John Jones. He's a great fighter, honestly. He's a great fighter. I just think I have the skill set to beat him. Um, unlike Cyril Gaon, who has the weakest mental of all time, he puts he he, he crumbles under the under the pressure. Uh, I think I think Aspinall won't because also Aspinall comes from a grappling background. He comes from a grappling background, jiu-jitsu black belt. I don't know what degree, but it might be high. Uh, he has some really sick takedown entries that he can set up well with his boxing. He has arguably the fastest hands in the division paired with arguably the heaviest hands. You can argue him having the fastest hands and the heaviest hands. Like, I think he might be the hardest-hitting heavyweight right now. And I think with how well-rounded of a game he has, I think he could be the one to beat John Jones. I'll say it right now. I think he could beat him. Am I saying it's a 100% chance? No. Am I saying he would smoke him? Yeah. I don't think it's a 100% chance that he is going to smoke, that he's going to smoke him. But I'd imagine... If Aspinall were to beat John Jones, I think he does it by first round knockout. Because I don't, because listen, I know I said he's a black belt, but I don't see John Jones letting himself get submitted. I don't think, 
I don't like the guy, but I will admit the guy has grit and he has mental fortitude. He's not going to let himself get submitted like that. The only way he's, he's tapping is if it's – is if, if Aspinall literally has, like, an arm bar and, and John's arm is literally, like, snapped in two. Or if he has, like – maybe if he has, like, a – he has, like, a rear naked choke that's, like, clearly in that John's not getting out of, then maybe he would tap. But I don't think I can see John getting submitted. But knocked out, I think Aspinall, I could see him finding the timing – on John and just landing that clean one, two down the pipe, dropping him and then just pounding him, dropping elbows and, and hammer fist and then putting him away and new Tom Aspinall. Uh, but apparently he's fighting Cyril gone. And I think July and I probably, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be London. Uh, fucking oh, uh, lame, but yeah, those are my picks for who I think the champion is champions are going to be by the end of the year. And, uh, Tell me what you think down below. Bye-bye.